Okay, we've had chat for years, decades, and yeah, we've come a long way since the days of chat rooms, instant messenger, and IRC. We're so used to communicating this way that it's hard to imagine life without it. Chatting with humans is one thing, but let's face it, chatting with computers was stuck at the same level for a long, long time. We've all seen those really bad chatbots with pre-scripted, poorly written answers. Sometimes you don't even get to ask questions, you're locked into using these terrible prompts. So chatting with a computer often felt like a total waste of time. But imagine a computer that's much better at recognizing the nuances of language, the double meanings, the slang, the humor, capable of considering the context of every word you say. It gives you the sensation that you're talking to another human being. This is what makes ChatGPT so awesome, so unique, so groundbreaking, and why it's taken off so incredibly fast since its release at the end of 2022. It all starts with a prompt, which can be anything, just like starting any chat conversation. You can just say hello and ask how it feels. Well, it'll no doubt tell you that it's an AI language model and has no feelings, but it's ready to help with questions or tasks. So let's start with a simple question. What movies have won the most Academy Awards? Which, as you might expect, will give you a list of movies and the number of awards, much like searching the internet and finding a top 10 list. And you might be thinking, okay, I can do that already with any search engine, so what's the big deal? That's true, but the difference here, besides the reduced number of steps and not having to look at ads, is that this is a chat. The AI remembers what you've talked about, so you can treat it like an ongoing conversation. So now I can say, tell me more about the first one. And unlike typing that into a search engine, ChatGPT understands the context of the current conversation and gives you more information about the first movie on the list, the creators, the story, and more about the awards. But instead of just looking up facts, you can also ask ChatGPT to explain things to you. Like, what is quantum computing? Quantum computing is a rapidly developing field of study that aims to harness the principles of quantum mechanics to perform complex computations. Unlike classical computers, which use bits as their basic units of information, where each bit... Maybe what you get back is a bit complex, so you can ask it to simplify it. Can you simplify that explanation? Sure. Quantum computing is a new kind of computing that uses the special rules of quantum mechanics, a branch of physics. Instead of using regular bits like classical computers, which can be zero or one. Well, that's better for me. Now, let's test our understanding. You can have it ask you questions, then check your answers. Ask me a multiple choice question about quantum computing. Which of the following properties of qubits is responsible for allowing them to exist in multiple states, zero and one, simultaneously? Luckily, I know this one. C. Correct. Superposition is the property of qubits that allows them to exist in multiple states, zero and one simultaneously. This unique feature... ChatGPT tells me I'm correct and even giving me a bit more context around the answer. But facts and explanations aren't the only thing it can do. ChatGPT can also be creative. Let's try a bit of poetry. Write a haiku about yourself. AI in the cloud, weaving words with gentle touch, endless knowledge found. And it, it can even write code. Write a Python script that scrapes the title from Pluralsight.com. All right, that gives me a good starting point. Okay, so how does this work? ChatGPT was created by OpenAI, an artificial intelligence research company. ChatGPT is a self-learning program whose main goal is to produce natural, human-sounding text in response to a prompt, no matter the subject. It's what's known as generative AI. 
This AI has learned from a very large, very diverse set of text-based data. Think books, web pages, white papers, Wikipedia, social media posts, almost the entire internet. It's not just learning the content, but also uses it to decipher the structure of human language and uses that knowledge to predict what it should say to you. It responds not from a script, but generates new text on the fly. It's really flexible, but if there's a secret to using ChatGPT, it comes down to the quality of your prompts. Let's say I want ChatGPT to help me write an email for a friend at work. I'll start with an intentionally simple prompt. Write an email congratulating someone on 10 years at the company. Okay, let's see. Dear whoever, hard work, dedication, commitment, uh-huh positive attitude, standard of excellence, part of our family. Yeah, so that is what I asked for, but it's formal, cliched, it's stiff. This is where a better prompt can make the world of difference. The more information you can give, the better. Now, let's try to get this email to sound a bit, well, more like me. One of my friends, Sam, has just reached 10 years at the company. I want to send her an email congratulating her. I want to keep it informal, not corporate or overly professional. Keep it simple. Respond more like Hemingway and less like Tolkien with a bit of dark humor. And this is the kind of prompt you can give ChatGPT with so much extra information and content. The kind of thing you would never type into a search engine. Okay, let's see what it gives me now. Now, this is much better. May the coffee be strong and the meetings be short. To be honest, I doubt I would ever use the word dank, but it's an amazing starting point. So questions, answers, poetry, code, recipes, party planning, marketing emails, whatever you can think of. If you need something written, ChatGPT can help. So when should you not use it? When you need 100% accuracy. This is because ChatGPT bases its answers on patterns and relationships it finds in the training data and then tries to improvise a response based on that, but it has no actual concept of what is true or false. It'll even tell you as much. ChatGPT can confidently give you a wrong answer, not maliciously, it just has no concept of truth. If you want to see an example, take a look at Simon Allardyce's video on how ChatGPT can be confidently wrong. The point I'm trying to make here is don't just blindly accept what you get back. Ask it in different ways. Ask for sources and then check those sources. Despite this, I absolutely enjoy ChatGPT. And so do a lot of other people. For example, it took Facebook over four years to reach a milestone of 100 million users. It took ChatGPT about two months. That's just one indicator of how important this technology is. The only question is, how will you use it?